These are five things you're doing to your hair that might be causing your hair loss, breakage, or damage. Things that you're not even sure, it's just like random, why is my hair doing this? I'm going to tell you why your hair is not doing what you want it to. I'm sat with my dog Chanel today. She's here. She just got groomed. She's very annoyed with me. The first thing you're doing that might be causing your hair loss is brushing wet hair. Now this is specifically for people who have naturally straight hair. So if you have naturally straight hair, your hair is the weakest when it is wet. However, if you have curly hair, this is the opposite. If you are brushing dry hair, that's what might be causing your breakage. Now, brushing wet hair might still damage you if you're brushing it extremely violently or if you just kind of spray your hair and it's in that very like in between wet and damp stage where it feels almost like stringy and too stretchy. If you comb your hair while your hair is in that position, then you might be causing excessive breakage even though you don't really realize it. You might think it's just shedding because you're combing your hair, but it may be breakage. The next thing you might be doing that's causing breakage is something that most people do. Curly hair, straight hair, it doesn't matter. This is styling wet hair. I know there's a theme with the wet hair thing here, but this is where a lot of the damage happens. Now, a lot of people seem to style wet hair because it's easier, it's easier to lay. If you have naturally curly hair, you might spray your hair down to put your hair in like a tight bun or just like a sleek bun. And if you have straight hair, you may just like wash your hair or decide to condition your hair like the night before and then just tie your hair in a sleek bun. That sleek bun, especially in the front where the hair is being pulled and then right where the hair tie is, you're putting excessive pressure there. And then as your hair dries, the style gets tighter. So it leads to even more breakage. If you're styling wet hair, especially often, if you do this once in a while, you probably won't see any results. But if you do this very often, this could be leading to a lot of hair breakage and shedding because you're pulling the wet hair too tight when it's in a very fragile state. The third thing you're doing that could be unexpectedly damaging or causing you to have hair loss is also to do with wet hair. This is heat styling, dripping wet hair. Now, there's two forms. I can't even believe the second one is back again. Wet to dry tools. Just ignore the wet part. Just use it as a dry tool. I know that they've become popular now, flat irons and straighteners and curlers that you can use on wet hair and it will dry your hair at the same time. It is boiling your hair. It is cooking your hair. It is frying your hair. Just blow dry your hair and then you want to go ahead and flat iron while your hair is completely dry. Heated tools already are damaging to your hair. Your hair is already prone to heat damage. So adding that extra layer of styling it while it is wet is just going to make it even worse. Now, when you're flat ironing your hair, sometimes you may see like a little steam coming out. That's usually fine because it's just a reaction of the heat with the products. But if you ever hear any kind of sizzling sound or there's excessive steam, you are cooking or frying or damaging your hair. The same thing with a blow dryer. If you're blow drying your hair on extremely high heat and your hair is dripping wet and when you put it on your hair shaft, there's like extreme levels of steam, you're basically like boiling the water in your hair shaft. Sure, it'll make your hair look straight, but over the long run, you're going to experience a lot of damage. And while we're here, let's just address the fact that heat protectant is not a gimmick. It's not just another product that companies want you to buy so you have more products in your routine. It, it actually does protect your hair from damage. So every time you do use a heat tool, Chanel, what are you doing? Every time you do use a heat tool, you want to go ahead and use a heat protectant. Whether your hair is wet or dry or whatever you're trying to do, use that heat protectant. The fourth thing that can cause excessive hair loss especially in terms of having weak, brittle hair that breaks often and also excessive shedding on your hair because of telogen effluvium, which is when your hair, too much of your hair goes into the shedding phase. This is because of Ozempic. Now, the reason why I'm putting this by itself is because I know it's trending right now. Now, Ozempic is not even meant for everyone anyway. And I don't believe that, yeah, sure, only diabetic people should take it. That's like a whole different situation. But like, if you've got the last five to 10 pounds to lose, like you don't need Ozempic, okay? Just get serious and dedicated, do something else. But 
This is not about why you should use Ozempic, why you shouldn't use it. This is if you're already using it, okay? The American Hair Loss Association has actually noticed that people who are misusing Ozempic, keyword misusing Ozempic, and other related substances like anything that contains semaglutide, which is basically Ozempic, they have been experiencing high levels of hair loss, because of the rapid weight loss. So it's not directly linked, but the rapid weight loss can actually cause hair loss because you're basically losing a lot of nutrients that would be going to your scalp and your body is like getting rid of them and you're sort of confused, almost in shock. And so your hair is going to go into too much of the shedding thing. And something else to note is that if you experience that excessive hair shedding, which is basically androgenetic alopecia, or androgenic alopecia, if you are already approaching the age where genetically most people in your family might start to lose their hair or start to get hair thinning, the hair that you lose might not grow back, okay? So when you're doing your whole weight loss thing, you need to think about it. Which leads me to my next one, which works in a similar way, which I had no idea about, but creatine can actually indirectly cause hair loss as well. I personally do not take creatine, but I have been thinking about it, and now this is making me not want to try it. But creatine is something that a lot of people use as a pre-workout, and it is very effective. A lot of people say it gives them a lot of energy before going to the gym, but a study was done amongst rugby players in South Africa, I believe, and these rugby players were taking creatine every single day. So the way they noticed the hair loss is similar to how the Ozempic works. It's not like the Ozempic directly caused the hair loss. It's more like the rapid weight loss caused by the Ozempic caused the hair loss. That's similar to what happened with the creatine. They found that there was a 50%, the research showed that there was a 50% increase in DHT, which is not great for hair growth, okay? It stunts your hair growth. The DHT production is what caused the hair loss. So this means if you already have a genetic predisposition for androgenic alopecia, using creatine may increase this. So if you're a man or a woman and the people in your family that start to go bald or start to get hair thinning around your age, if you start taking creatine, similar to the weight loss thing, it can speed up the rate of how fast your hair loss is going to come and preventing it from coming back. However, if you have been taking creatine because it's a very popular pre-workout, if you've been taking it for months and you've seen no change in your hair loss or hair growth rates, then it probably doesn't affect you and you should be fine as long as you don't use it excessively. Hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. Watch the video right here if you'd like to see something else from my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one.